Welcome to this video on how to notate a major scale. Um, I'll be going through the process in a simple way um, of being able to notate major scales using uh, the circle of fifths diagram that we discussed in the past couple of videos. Um, if you haven't seen that, go and check that one out. Um, with this video, you'll need to have a basic understanding of your treble clef and bass clef notes. Um, if you're not familiar with these, please go and check that. I'll assume that you know what all the lines and spaces are um, in your treble clef and bass clef. Let's get started. Okay, just a quick little recap on this diagram that we looked at last time. Um, on the outside of the circle, we finished with knowing that the um, major key signature information was on the outside. We finished with knowing that the inside of the circle was to do with the minor key signatures. On the right hand side we had our sharps, on the left hand side we had our flats, and down here we had our order of sharps starting from the left going to the right, and we had our order of flats going from the right towards the left. Okay and we spoke about how to translate this into key signatures of sharps and flats. So let's translate this information now into writing our major scales. So, moving over to my iPad over here, let's start off with drawing our treble clef. Okay, so we've got our treble clef, and on our circle of fifths, I'm going to start with our G major over here where we had a G, it had a 1 next to it referring to 1 sharp and if I go to my order of sharps that was our F sharp so let's draw our F sharp because we're going to write this scale with a key signature so our F sharp goes over our top line there okay so the next thing we're going to draw in is the notes now major scales and specifically this one being the G major starts on a G. So whatever scale you're writing, you will always start your scale um, on the letter of that scale. So let's put our G note in. And it goes on that note. And with our major scales, we're going to rewrite them as eight note diatonic scales. So we go up our normal musical alphabet to work out the next lot of notes. So we've got G, followed by A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And our F sharp has been taken care of by that key signature that we've already put in there. So there we have it. We've got G major with our F sharp in the key signature. Um, and I had a student ask about uh, scale degrees. I can quickly touch on that right now. So if we look at our scale degrees as a numbering system for the notes of our scale. So if I put that in. Our first note was number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got our eight notes there. So if I was in a conversation with somebody and we were talking about the G major scale and its second degree, I'd be referring to the A note. So note A would be the second degree in the key of G major. If I was talking about my sixth note, I'd be referring to the E in the key of G major. Okay, so next scale, let's do another example. So back to our circle of fifths, I'm going to look at one of the flats keys. So over here we had our B flat, and in our key of B flat we had two flats. So in our order of flats, the first two flats are B and E flat. So let's keep that in mind. So let's draw our next treble clef. Okay, we'll draw in our two flats, our B flat and E flat. Now when drawing in the notes, before we do that we'll put the name of it, B flat major. So before drawing in the notes of this scale, have a think about where your starting note is going to be. Um, for those familiar with the treble clef, you've got multiples of the same letter. And so if you're going to have to go up to the next highest version of that net letter ascending, you've got to be aware of where you're going. So I'm going to be starting my B flat below the staff, right here. So that's where my B will be, 
below the staff. Then using my alphabet, I'll go up. So B, then C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and there we have it. We've got our B flat major scale with a key signature. Now, if you are asked to write the B flat major scale without a key signature, let's cover that one. So if I get my eraser, and let's get rid of our key signature that we had over there. So now I've got the letters B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So nothing to do correctly with the B flat major scale. So let's put the two flats in again. So we need to have our B flat. So that's our first note that needs fixing. And the very last note also needs to be a B flat. And the other letter that we had as our second flat in this key signature was the E. So let's go to our E on the bottom line. Okay. Let's fix that E up a little bit more. That was a little bit low. A little bit better there. Okay. Uh, so now we've got our B flat major scale with accidentals. So each note has got the flat symbol in front of it. Now something to point out if you haven't come across this before. Um, that first note was B flat. And you notice how I say B flat. I don't call it a flat B. So visually on our notation we've got to have the flat symbol or in some situations our sharp symbol or natural symbol in front of the note. So, But when we say it, we say it as a B flat. We say it as an F sharp, but we draw it as a flat B or a sharp F type of thing when drawing these notes in. Um, let's try another example. So this time we'll do it as a uh, bass clef example. So we'll come over and do D major. So D major had two sharps. So And those two sharps was F sharp and C sharp, the first two in our order. So let's draw a bass clef this time. Okay, so I got my bass clef. Now the two sharps, if I was doing this with a key signature, was the F sharp and C sharp. And we'll label this one as well. D major. Okay, so, and again, thinking about where you're starting and finishing. So I'm writing this scale again, ascending. And starting on D, and I'm using the middle line. And to work out the notes, I use my musical alphabet again. So D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then D. And then I've got my D major scale in the bass clef with a key signature. Um, you can apply this to any of those major scales on the outside of the circle. Um, feel free to comment. Hopefully you found that that is a useful um, little lesson. And don't forget to subscribe. Any other suggestions or theory knowledge that you need some help with, um, just put it in the comments below and I'm happy to help out. Thanks.